Good Monday morning. I'm Otis Corbett, and I'm coming to you on Facebook this morning so that we can start off this week the right way together with Scripture and prayer. Our passage today is Acts 20, verses 32 through 36. This passage reads, And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of His grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. I have coveted no man's silver or gold or apparel. Yea, ye yourselves know that these hands have ministered unto my necessities and to them that were with me. I have shewed you all things, how that so laboring ye ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. And when he had thus spoken, he kneeled down and prayed with them all. One aspect of being involved in ministry for more than three decades is that I have many memories. And some of these memories are pleasant and some are other than pleasant. (laughs) And others are just, well, let's just say they are unique. And in that regard, I remember the time, very clearly remember the time that I was given a gift of a dozen pairs of white athletic socks. Now, I had traveled to a small town to advise a church there about how to expand and improve their buildings to support their ministries. It was quite a long drive to get to this town, but our meeting went well, and I felt like the church's leadership was really well on its way to making some good decisions for the future of their church. As I was about to take my leave from this group of people, my Uh, I felt the tap on one of my shoulders, and one of the lay leaders of the church asked me to walk with him out to the parking lot. When we arrived at his car, he reached inside and pulled out a plastic bag, which he thrust into my hands. We know you had a long drive up here, he said. Here's something to show our appreciation. And in that bag were those aforementioned white athletic socks. Now, the missing element to this story was that the town in question was known for being the location of one of the largest and, frankly, one of the last garment factories in our state, which, as a matter of fact, produced socks. Socks were, therefore, a common and eminently practical gift to visitors to that town. It happened all the time. Beaming with pride, my host said, I hope you enjoy these. And I did. Those socks were an unusual gift in many ways, but I used them for many months. I was glad to have them, and I was also glad to allow my host to enjoy the blessings of generosity. Paul also knew the blessing of giving to others. In fact, generosity was an important thing to him. It was so important that he included it in his last words to the elders of the church at Ephesus before being taken to Rome for his audience with Caesar. Remember, he had appealed to Caesar. And such an event is likely to focus one's thoughts. So the fact that Paul reminded them of the teaching of Jesus about generosity, I think, is very instructive. Another interesting fact is that one of the most common topics that Jesus talked about, or one of the most common things he taught about or used as a teaching point, was money, including economics, greed, taxes, and giving. For example, in the Sermon on the Plain in Luke 6, Jesus taught, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together, and running over shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. Luke 6, 38. From this passage of Scripture, we can glean at least two basic principles about generosity. At least two basic principles. First, generosity recognizes God's ownership. The basis of generosity, as well as stewardship and several other values, is the fact of God's ownership of everything. As Creator, God can and does claim possession on everything we see and of everything we do not see. The right of God to be in control of all creation is beyond doubt, argument, and challenge in the Scriptures. And the interesting thing is what God has done with His creation. He gave it to us. You see, our God is a giving God. He gave us this world. 
He gave us life itself, and He gave us His uniquely begotten Son to save us from our sin when we ruined everything else. God is not a hoarder keeping all things for Himself. God is not a spoiler denying things to others out of spite. God is not forgetful ignoring the needs and wants of people. No, God is a giver. And not only does God want to give, but God also has the power to give, as Paul wrote in his benediction to the letter to the Ephesians. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that He would grant you, according to the riches of His glory, to be strengthened with might by His Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, and that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge, that ye may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto Him, who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in, in us, unto Him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. You see, God is our model for generosity. He has the right to expect us to be generous in return. And in fact, when he made his covenant with Abraham, God told him this very thing. He said, And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and I will make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Genesis 12, 2 and 3. God's people are clearly intended to be generous people. We also see in this passage that generosity realizes God's blessing. Besides recognizing that God expects us to be generous, we can also see here that God blesses those who are generous. In Luke 6, 38, Jesus taught that when we give, we get blessed. And He also gave us clues to the dimensions of that blessing. Good measure. One of the ways merchants cheated people in biblical times was to have false scales or grain measures that were not accurate. God, however, is scrupulously honest. He never cheats His people. Well, He never cheats anybody, <laughs> but He certainly never cheats His people. Pressed down and shaken together. When some commodities are measured in their, their shapes, cause air pockets to form. And... and to make sure that this measurement is true, these commodities should be shaken to minimize the air pockets and to maximize the amount of product being sold. And this is why that um, boxes of cereal are labeled to note that they are packed by weight and not by volume, because there's often a lot of air at the top of those boxes of cereal. If we were buying cereal from God, He'd shake the box so that the cereal would settle to the bottom, but then He'd top it up with more cereal on top. Running over. God is not cheap with His blessings. They are so great that they would overflow any container in which they could be put, should that be physically possible. God is generous, and He gives us exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. When I was in seminary in New Orleans, I learned about a French word that was commonly used in that city, and that word is lanyap. This means a little something extra, like the 13th donut in a baker's dozen. Now, when we give, God blesses us with more than just lanyap, more than just a little more. He gives us more than a little extra. He pours out His favor on us, the way that Mary poured out the expensive perfume on the hair of Jesus during the supper at Bethany. Our God is an extravagantly generous God. In conclusion, I once heard my pastor when I was in high school describe the way of the world when it came to possessions. This is what he said. He said, the world says, get all you can, put it in a can, put a lid on the can, then sit on the lid. 
On the other hand, love really doesn't help anyone unless it is given away. And since God is love, it's natural that He is a giving God. Thus, it is natural that we should be generous people as we imitate God's behavior toward us. Now, let's turn our attention to a time of prayer. Each week, we want to pray for a different church. So this week, pray with me for Mount Pisgah Baptist Church and Pastor Ed Gaines. And please also continue to pray for our churches without pastors, particularly our bivocational churches. But really now, all of our churches are having a hard time these days finding a pastor. Pray for our pastors without churches. The sheep need a shepherd. Pray for those affected by Hurricane Ian. Pray for the first responders and, and for really all the governmental agencies that are working to help people recover from that storm. Pray for our Southern Baptist Disaster Relief volunteers and then other groups of volunteers as well who are giving of their time and talents and effort and energy to help out. Pray that they all stay safe and that the recovery efforts go well. Pray for all of those on fixed incomes and others right now who are struggling with food insecurity because inflation really is starting to bite. It's really starting to impact a lot of people. So pray for them and pray for a general improvement in our economy so that food and other necessities would become less expensive and more affordable. Pray for all those groups like our Christian service centers that are helping people who need that kind of hand up as they continue to face these economic difficulties. And pray for the Covington Baptist Association. Pray that we would grow stronger and more unified as a fellowship of Southern Baptist churches in Covington County, Alabama. And pray for our annual meeting, which is going to be October the 20th at West County Line Baptist Church. So pray for these things, and I will pray that God will give you a good week and that you would feel His blessings every day. Pray with me. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make His face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May the Lord lift up His countenance upon us and give us peace. Amen. Thanks for watching. Again, I hope you all have a good Monday morning and a great week to come. See you again here next week.